there. I'm Latar Dragu. And I just got my book in the mail. I'm so excited to get it done. <laughs> and I decided to use this opportunity to read my chapter. Chapter 17, Time Management for Procrastinators by Latar Dragu. I identify as a procrastinator. So why am I in this book? Procrastination is the opposite of getting it done, right? I have my own version of time management, not typical stuff. It's my version and it works for me. I get a lot done. Just in time, I submitted my chapter at the last possible moment, but I did it. It might not be healthy to go from one deadline to the next. I worked for a magazine publisher for 18 years with an average of four deadlines per month. My brain is primed for responding to deadlines. My goal was to be a published author on Amazon six times this year. That's why I'm in this book. This will be my second time published, the first being the book I read, one of Linda Sunshine West's anthology books, which became an international bestseller. My completely fabricated deadline for an arbitrary goal made me into a best-selling author. My remaining four books might publish on December 31st of 2022. That just goes to show you. <laughs> or I might not even meet this goal. Many people want to be an author and end up going to their grave with that dream unfulfilled. But I have two den right now. I recently moved across the country. While packing and traveling, I put on a few virtual summits, one from a travel trailer. I recently put on another summit with Forbes Riley, Eric Lawholm, and Linda Sunshine West as my headline speakers. Simultaneously, I put together an online course, promoted multiple online events, homeschooled my kid, and I am getting a life coach certification partnered with a branding company as head of their real estate division and partnered with Linda Sunshine West as her affiliate partner manager. I'm not your typical time management expert. I heard they wake up at 4 a.m. and that's just not me. Have a killer morning routine, are super organized with redundant organization systems and insist on focusing on one thing until completion. Meanwhile, I have a hand in so many different pots right now, it's a shocker that I haven't burned the chow. <laughs> Things fall through the cracks occasionally. I've missed a few appointments. For shame. The only reason I have gotten so much done is because I take responsibility for a lot of things and commit to getting them done by a certain time. Shoot for the stars, and even if you don't make it, you'll end up on the moon. Totally botched that, but I think you get the gist. So here are my tips for effective time management for procrastinators. One, imperfect action beats perfect inaction. You can plan, pontificate, and ponder, but unless you implement, your vision is just a figment of your imagination. If you bumble, stumble, and blunder through, drastically imperfect but undeterred action, you'll eventually make it to the finish line. Number two, commitment is critical. It's a critical component of productivity. If you create a deadline, you will be more concerned with completion than with the minutia of inconsequential details. Number three, Intention propels beyond obstacles towards your goals, as opposed to perfecting every aspect to overcome your fears, insecurities, and imposter syndrome. Number four, whether it's your own unwavering conviction, a coach, or accountability buddy, being kept in check is another crucial element in getting or done. Self-motivation gives an unfair advantage. If you lack that attribute, you can still win the game if you have someone you can lean on when you stray off course. Number five, time management gurus say to focus on one thing. 
I found this to be unrealistic. You can live in a vacuum, but you won't be connected with the people if you get intense tunnel vision. Daily activities are an assortment of various activities and tasks. Being a multi-passionate mompreneur, I have found a work-life balance I'm quite pleased with. Sure, if you have a brain like a computer, you can get away with something like that. I get bored easily and need to mix things up for mental stimulation. So while I switch between things often, I'm effective at getting into a flow state, which counters many shortcomings. Each thing moves forward together towards an end. Number six, you don't need to wake up at 3 a.m. every morning just to be productive. I'm not knocking it if that's your thing. But if you are a night owl like me, you don't have to feel weak or inferior if you can't adjust to a millionaire morning routine. Just wrap your activities around your most productive time of day. When I wake up, my mind is laser focused and clear, but I'm reluctant to do physical activity. This is when I tend to business related matters. During the afternoon, I get brain fog, and instead of fretting, I simply get up and do physical tasks such as chores, running errands, or exercising. Time hack, listen to audiobooks while going for a walk. And seven, lastly, dream big. I keep moving forward despite setbacks and distractions because my vision is bigger than myself. Set goals and deadlines, so if you're a procrastinator, you get it done anyway. If your goal is getting 100 things done and you get just 10 things done, you still win. Consider the person who, unwilling to fail, did not set goals to achieve. You did 10 more things than that person. Be willing to risk, compromise, and take on something big and scary. Sometimes it feels more critical to get a chapter done at 2 a.m. than it to go to bed at a reasonable hour. Or run a summit instead of sl sleeping on a Saturday morning. To thine own self be true. You do you. Don't worry about what others think. Only take on the advice that serves you, even this. Question it all. You could decide to completely reject my opinions, and that's okay too. It's exactly what you needed. Don't let small minds keep you from becoming great and shining your light. Trust yourself. Have a passion. Follow it. Have a vision. Be it. Have a dream. And get it done. Thank you very much for listening and have a great day.